Chapter 14 Taking Flight The hallway was darkly lit by LED lamps that hung on the walls as Solomon walked along it. A large double door with iron bars across it automatically slid open as he approached, revealing a lift. Solomon moved inside and the doors closed. A tone sounded and the lift ascended without Solomon pressing anything. Amazing, marveled Solomon as he reached the highest floor and the lift halted, doors opening to a spacious yellow apartment building. Before him were floor-to-ceiling windows that viewed out to Reinhardt. Though other buildings towered higher, the view was still impressive down to the streets below. Solomon spent several minutes surveying the view through the apartment. It certainly was impressive, as the concierge had described. Multiple bedrooms, each with their own bathroom, a large living area with an open plan kitchen. If Solomon hadn't known better, he would have taken it for an apartment back on earth, if it wasn't for the fact that it was entirely devoid of any furniture, appliance or amenity. For one, there was no toilet or shower in the bathroom, nor were there any taps or sink. The only thing there seemed to be was a mirror which took up a whole wall. The kitchen was missing a sink as well, along with a fridge and kettle. There was no furniture to sit on, nor any beds to sleep on. Solomon was about to go back downstairs when a buzz within his mind link caught his attention. He accepted the connection and the voice sounded. Welcome to Animator Apartments, said a feminine robotic voice, where your dreams appear right before your eyes. Animator? repeated Solomon in response. First users will be guided with the simplest of ease, said the robot. You're in the lounge. Lounge rooms typically require seats. Please think of something you wish to sit on. Solomon thought of a computer chair. The moment he did, a beam of light appeared before him and began to construct the computer chair within his mind. Once it was completed, the light disappeared, leaving Solomon searching for the source. Please proceed to the bedroom, said the voice. Solomon did so, and the voice instructed, Think of a bed you'd like to sleep on. Size, firmness, and style can be adjusted to your choosing post-creation. Solomon thought of a king-size bed and watched it materialise before him. He followed the beam of light and saw in the room there were small divots in the roof and small shiny metal objects inside. What are those things? he asked. Animators, replied the robot voice plainly. That which you think, they create. Awed, Solomon furnished the entire apartment to his liking, including a wall-sized television, multiple fish tanks, a walk-in fridge full of food, a gold toilet, and a hover chair that could carry him from room to room. Have you completed your apartment? asked the voice. Yes, but what if I want to change something? he asked. Simply connect with the animators and think about it, she replied. Now I just need to animate myself a maid, joked Solomon. Animating life is forbidden, said the robot voice, sounding suddenly cold. I was only joking, he replied, startled at the abruptness. The animator apartment wishes you a pleasant evening, replied the voice, and the connection was lost. Solomon gazed around the apartment. I wonder if they'd tried to make life before, he thought. He stared into the tank at the snake-like yellow fish sliding through the water. He noticed the fish flickered and realised it was a digital projection. Just like the spider dragon, he thought. He made his way to the kitchen and inspected the contents of the fridge. Everything was sealed inside small tin yellow cans. Small labels were printed on the cans such as pizza, steak and chips and spaghetti bolognese. He picked the pizza can and saw there was no ring pull. On the other side were words, place inside the microwave. A small yellow box stood at the far end of the bench with a hole in the top that appeared the size of the can. He moved over to it and placed the can inside. He heard a series of whirs, clicks and beeps and the smell of pizza wafted through the air. An audible sound emanated from the box and Solomon opened it to reveal a small yellow pizza inside more than enough to fill his rumbling stomach. 
Thrilled by the device, he ate several more servings and located another can which was called beer. Testing the microwave out once more, he was amazed to see a foaming glass appear suddenly inside and he washed down the pizza with it. Solomon was now feeling sleepy, but decided he should find the charmaton the concierge was talking about. Surveying through the apartment, he located a small room with a platform in the middle. As soon as he stepped on to it, a buzzing occurred in his mind link, and he was connected. Welcome to Shamaton, said a deep male voice with an African-sounding accent, where you can reshape your body with your mind, if you are prepared to pay the price. Solomon felt a shiver round down his spine at the words. I don't want to change forever, just for the tournament, he replied. Nothing is permanent, said the man. Everything that is done can be undone, as well as the inverse. Solomon was hesitant to proceed, shifting his weight on the platform. Will it hurt? he asked within his mind. Change can be painful if one is not prepared for it, said the voice. Or it can be pleasant if one minds is ready. What is the minimum to pass through Reinhardt unnoticed? Solomon asked. The pigmentation of the eyes is the first procedure for those who wish to assimilate into a society should undergo. How much does it cost? asked Solomon, warming to the idea only slightly. You have enough credit to change your eye colour to every hue in existence many times over. Perhaps even all at once, if you like, said the voice reassuringly. Solomon felt himself suddenly lifted off the ground, suspended in the air by invisible strings. He found himself unable to return to the ground. Calm yourself, said the voice. The elevation allows the modification to occur freely. Nothing will happen to you unless you wish it to. Solomon felt his heart beating despite the reassurance. Your eyes are as you are blue currently. Is there a hue of yellow you wish to choose? Solomon thought of many different colours of yellow, but could not think of any names. You can always think of the hue rather than naming it. Solomon thought of banana yellow. Very good. Would you like to proceed? asked the voice. Yes, said Solomon, somewhat hesitantly. A pain drove into his eyes, unseen and unknown. Solomon was about to cry out when it ceased, his vision returning, and he found himself back in the room. A reflective object floated before his eyes, casting his face back at him to see banana-coloured eyes he now had. That hurt, complained Solomon. It would be a lie to tell you otherwise, replied the deep voice. Are there additions you wish to make? Your arms are long. They would make fine wings. Don't take my arms, said Solomon, clutching them to his torso defensively. Nothing will happen unless you wish it to, replied the voice. Changes are not permanent. I just want to blend in, with only the minimum being done, said Solomon. A beak would complete your desired objective. Discreet is preferable, yes? A toucan beak may be too much? Discreet is preferable, said Solomon, as little as possible. I would just do the beak of a small bird. Do you accept? I do replied Solomon, and a burst of pain erupted in the lower part of his face. He could see something appearing before his eyes. Like before, Solomon was about to scream when the pain suddenly ceased. The procedure is complete, said the voice. It would be recommended that you familiarise yourself with how to look after your beak. Solomon's mind link was engaged, and he got access to a host of information on beak hygiene and care. Thanks, said Solomon. Your attire would be the last remaining cause of not blending in, said the voice. I don't have anything else to wear, countered Solomon. We can supply you with the latest fashion, said the voice. Though not the high-end fashion that is available through other providers, we have an adequate range to meet your needs. Solomon saw the reflective surface that was displaying his beak expanded and showed his entire body. Suddenly his spacesuit was removed, his skinny naked body revealed underneath. Solomon gasped and hid himself with his hands. There is nothing to be ashamed of, said the male voice. We are a professional service and adhere to the strictest privacy policies with our clientele, he said reassuringly. Give me some clothes. In a flash, a satin yellow suit was upon his body. It began at the neck 
and stretched all the way down to his knees in a single piece of clothing. The arms stopped at the elbows and billowed out with decorative ends. The suit was buttoned at the front with golden suns that sparkled. A pair of yellow sandals were upon his feet, complete with small decorative wings. What are those for? Solomon asked. Any attempt to be bird-like is seen as becoming of a citizen of Reinhardt. Brooches, necklaces, and decorative displays will bode well for assimilating into society. Though Solomon felt silly, the suit did feel comfortable, and he wasn't sweating like he was wearing the spacesuit in the sun. I'll take it, I guess, said Solomon, somewhat reluctantly. Very good. You will now pass for a citizen of Reinhardt. Are you satisfied with your alterations? asked the voice. Yes, said Solomon, wondering what the question was leading to. Your review will be added to our databases. We shall charge the necessary credits and thank you for choosing Charmaton. Solomon descended back onto the ground and touched the floor once more. Quickly exiting the room, he found a mirror and beheld himself. He did not recognize himself at first, his yellow eyes, beak and strange clothing catching him off guard. Slowly, he came forward, touching a hardened beak upon his face. He opened and closed the beak like he would his mouth, the motion feeling exactly the same. Within the beak, his mouth was still present, as well as his nose underneath. It's just for show, he realized. There wasn't any modification at all, just the appearance as though it were. He studied closely at the eyes and realized the contact lenses covering his normal iris, but could only be seen up close. It's all a charade, he thought to himself. They aren't birds at all. They're just pretending to be birds. Enraged, Solomon decided to head out into Reinhardt and see how the people reacted to his appearance, despite his fatigue. He quickly took the elevator downstairs and passing the concierge desk, he saw the woman who had served him was not there. Disappointed to not get his comeuppance, he walked out of the hotel and onto the streets of Reinhardt. The sun had begun to set, casting a golden glow over the city as a flurry of activity above him caught his attention. Hundreds of birds swarmed in mass in the skyline above. They were all returning, it seemed, from their respective works, the many shades of yellow birds flying to varying places in the skyline. Transfixed, Solomon almost bumped into several birds walking upon the ground. Sorry, he said to a crow-faced man. My mistake, young master he replied, and scurried away. Solomon was surprised by the reaction, and sought out other people to see how he was treated. His interactions were very similar, the birds inclining their heads or moving out of the way to let him pass. Though pleased he wasn't getting dirty expressions anymore, he felt somewhat of a charlatan. They all are, he thought to himself, as he caught glimpses of the human characteristics underneath the beaks and wings. How are they flying, though? he wondered, gazing back up and seeing the birds above. Solomon decided to ask a gruff-looking pigeon, who had landed nearby, holding a package. Excuse me, said Solomon. The pigeon looked up, surprised. Yes? Your wings, said Solomon, pointing at them. Where did you get them? he asked. Get them? he replied, confused. I've had wings all my life. If I wanted to get wings, where would I go? asked Solomon, not wanting to upset him. A charmaton has the means, or, if you cannot afford it, there are stores that sell wings, he said somewhat gruffly. Where would I go and find one of these stores? asked Solomon, really not keen to go back to the charmaton. There are several stores along the main road. It's the signs with the wings, he gestured towards a bustling part of town in the distance. Thanks very much, said Solomon, and sped away into the throng of birds. He blended in without so much as a passing glance. His appearance seemed to have no effect on anyone in this part of town, whereas before they were making way for him. He spied an illuminated sign with wings upon it and opened the door to the inside of the shop. The contents of the shop appeared like giant butterflies had been pinned to the walls. Metal of varying shades of yellow adorned the walls in differing sizes, designs and options. Some had wings that connected from one end to the other in a complete arc. Others had sharp individual wings that ran across the skeleton of the wingspan. He cast his eyes around the shop, amazed by the visual. He completely missed the shopkeeper, staring at him. Evening, 
said the shopkeeper, making Solomon jump. Hi, said Solomon, surprised. I, I didn't see you there. Something you were wanting, said the shopkeeper. Solomon wasn't quite sure where to begin with the possible choices. I'd like to see the very top of Reinhardt, said Solomon. All the way to the peak of the highest building, he said optimistically. Ah, you'll be wanting the same as Cockatoo Collins, the sun scrapers, said the shopkeeper, gesturing towards the wings above him. Solomon saw images of a person with a crest like a cockatoo upon his head of hair, wearing the suit. He's completely normal, said Solomon, noticing his human face. Yes, he's the only male non-altered competitor in this year's Sunball tournament, save for the hair, of course, said the shopkeeper, somewhat proudly. These are his signature wings he designed himself. Quite a marvel he is. Grew up around these parts, don't you know? Solomon was transfixed by this person. He seemed personable and heroic at the same time. I'll take them, said Solomon, without a moment's hesitation. Delighted, the shopkeeper ran him through the wings and how to operate them. The wings were stored inside a backpack that could be extended or contracted via the mind link. The wings synchronized with the user, making usage not a problem for first timers. The frame of the wings seemed to be like carbon fibre, while the wings themselves were an ultra-thin mesh that grew and shrank, depending on the user's movements. You said he designed this all by himself, said Solomon, amazed at the technology. Impressive, isn't he? Rumour has he got it from the Lord Translucent himself to design it, said the shopkeeper. Of course, that could be just birds chirping. They hate any humans competing at the Sunball tournament. Solomon completed the transaction and thanked the shopkeeper for his time. Exiting the shop, Solomon immediately strapped on the yellow backpack, feeling it connect with his mind link. He thought of the word, up. Instantly, the wings contained in the pack extended outwards and with a downward thrust, propelled him into the sky. A few more wing beats and Solomon was soaring. With the connection to his mind, he could adjust for other birds and obstacles instantly. As Solomon flew, the sun had nearly set, the last of the sun's rays visible as Solomon raised higher up above the surface of Reinhardt. Below him was the vista of the stone city that stretched out before him. Roads and streets intersected and stretched out like veins running in every direction. The pillared buildings standing above them appeared like trees, magnificent from the ground, but spectacular from above as they fanned out like a forest before him. The higher he went, the more incredible the scenery below. Soon he realised all that was above him was the church, which shined in the near distance. Remembering the concierge saying the edge was stored within the sun at the top of the spire, Solomon decided to fly over and inspect it. The cathedral grew in abundance as he approached, the footprint taking up several city blocks. As he got closer, he could hear the sound of other beating wings nearby, but ignored them, thinking them only the other normal citizens of Reinhardt. The spire of the cathedral had a platform surrounding the sun, where Solomon could land. Connecting with his mind link, he carefully slowed and gently landed on the circular platform. He allowed himself a few moments to drink in the vista, as well as the incredible ability he now possessed. Pleased with himself, he turned and glanced up at the giant ball atop the spire. He could hear the beating of wings growing louder, but paid them no mind, as the bright glow within the globe attracted him. There was something within that seemed to call him, whispering to him something forbidden. It was as Solomon reached towards the sun, he saw a flicker of something huge in his peripheral vision. He was too slow to react to the giant claws that clamped down upon his shoulder, and lifted him off the platform. Shouting in surprise at finding himself being carried away, Solomon lifted his eyes to see a giant golden eagle above him, its talons wrapped around his shoulders. You have violated the sacred church of the order, he heard the bird speak in his mind, harsh and resonant. You shall be taken to the howling heights for your disobedience to the order's rules. I didn't know, replied Solomon. Your actions speak otherwise, young master. Perhaps in your penance you can reflect on your behaviour, came the reply. How long will I be gone for? asked Solomon, squirming in the talons that dug into his shoulders. 
Be still, or I shall press my claws deeper into you, said the eagle. The penance is a night atop the heights. We pray you use it wisely and reflect on your behaviour, lest it become your home permanently. The eagle carried Solomon away from Reinhardt and into the yellow and black sky.